The Tale of Jemima Puddle Duck. What a funny sight it is to see a brood of ducklings with a hen. Listen to the story of Jemima Puddle Duck, who was annoyed because the farmer's wife would not let her hatch her own eggs. Her sister-in-law, Mrs. Rebecca Puddle Duck, was perfectly willing to leave the hatching to someone else. I have not the patience to sit in a nest for 28 days. And no more have you, Jemima. You would let them go cold. You know you would. I wish to hatch my own eggs. I will hatch them all by myself, quacked Jemima Puddle Duck. She tried to hide her eggs, but they were always found and carried off. Jemima Puddle Duck became quite desperate. She determined to make a nest right away from the farm. She set off in a sp fine spring afternoon along the cart road that leads over the hill. She was wearing a shawl and a poke bonnet. When she reached the top of the hill, she saw a wood in the distance. She thought that it looked a safe, quiet spot. Jemima Puddle Duck was not much in the habit of flying. She ran downhill a few yards, flapping her shawl, and then she jumped off into the air. She flew beautifully when she had a good start. She skimmed over the treetops until she saw an open place in the middle of the wood where the trees and brushwood had been cleared. Jemima lighted rather heavily and began to waddle about in search of a convenient dry nesting place. She rather fancied a tree stump amongst some tall foxgloves, but seated upon the stump, she was startled to find an elegantly dressed gentleman reading a newspaper. He had black prick ears and sandy coloured whiskers. Quack, said Jemima Puddle Duck, with her head on, and her bonnet on one side. Quack. The gentleman raised his eyes above his newspaper and looked curiously at Jemima. Madam, have you lost your way? said he. He had a long bushy tail, which he was sitting upon, as the stump was somewhat damp. Jemima thought him mighty civil and handsome. She explained that she had not lost her way, but that she was trying to find a convenient dry nesting place. Ah, is that so? Indeed! said the gentleman with sandy whiskers, looking curiously at Jemima. He folded up the newspaper and put it in his coat-tail pocket. Jemima complained of the superfluous hen. Indeed, how interesting. I wish I could meet with that fowl. I would teach it to mind its own business. But as to a nest, there is no difficulty. I have a sack full of feathers in my woodshed. No, my dear madam, you will be in nobody's way. You may sit there as long as you like, said the bushy, long-tailed gentleman. He led the way to a very retired, dismal-looking house amongst the foxgloves. It was built of faggots and turf, and there were two broken pails, one on top of the, the other, by way of a chimney. This is my summer residence. You wouldn't find my earth, uh, my winter house so convenient, said the hospitable gentleman. There was a tumble-down shed at the back of the house made of old soap boxes. The gentleman opened the door and showed Jemima in. The shed was almost quite full of feathers. It was almost suffocating, but it was comfortable and very soft. Jemima Puddle Duck was rather surprised to find such a vast quantity of feathers, but it was very comfortable, and she made a nest without any trouble at all. When she came out, the sandy-whiskered gentleman was sitting on a log, reading the newspaper. At least, he had it spread out, but he was looking over the top of it. He was so polite that he seemed almost sorry to let Jemima go home for the night. He promised to take great care of her nest until she came back again the next day. He said he loved eggs and ducklings. He should be proud to see a fine nestful in his woodshed. Jemima Puddle Duck came every afternoon she laid nine eggs in the nest. They were green-white and very large. The foxy gentleman admired them immensely. He used to turn them over and count them when Jemima was not there. At last, Jemima told him that she intended to begin to sit next day. And I will bring a bag of corn with me so that I need never leave my nest until the eggs are hatched. They might catch cold, said the conscientious Jemima. Madam, I beg you not to trouble yourself with a bag. I will provide oats. 
But before you commence your tedious sitting, I intend to give a dinner party. A treat. Let us have a dinner party all to ourselves. May I ask you to bring up some herbs from the farm garden to make a savoury omelette? Sage and thyme and mint and two onions and some parsley. I will provide the lard for the stuff, uh, lard for the omelette, said the hospital, hospitable gentleman with sandy whiskers. Jemima Puddleback was a simpleton. Not even the mention of sage and onions made her suspicious. She went round the farm garden, nibbling off snippets of all the different sorts of herbs that are used for stuffing roast duck. And she waddled into the kitchen and got two onions out of a basket. The collie dog, Kep, met her coming out. What are you doing with those onions? Where do you go every afternoon by yourself, Jemima Puddleduck? Jemima was rather in awe of the collie. She told him the whole story. The collie listened with his wise head on one side. He grinned when she described the polite gentleman with sandy whiskers. He asked several questions about the wood and about the exact position of the house and shed. Then he went out and trotted down the village. He went to look for two foxhound puppies who were out at walk with the butcher. Jemima Puddleduck went up the cart road for the last time on a sunny afternoon. She was rather burdened with the bunches of herbs and two onions in a bag. She flew over the wood and alighted opposite the house of the bushy, long-haired long gentleman. He was sitting on a log. He sniffed the air and kept glancing uneasily around the wood. When Jemima alighted, he quite jumped. Come into the house as soon as you have looked at those eggs. Bring the herbs for the omelette. Be sharp. He was rather abrupt. Jemima Puddleduck had never heard him speak like that. She felt surprised and uncomfortable. While she was inside, she heard pattering feet around the back of the shed. Someone with a black nose sniffed at the bottom of the door and then locked it. Jemima became much alarmed. A moment afterwards, there were the most awful noises, barking, baying, growls and howls, squealing and groans, and nothing more was ever seen of that foxy-whiskered gentleman. Presently, Kep opened the door of the shed and let out Jemima Puddleduck. Unfortunately, the puppies rushed in and gobbled up all the eggs before he could stop them. He had a bite on his ear and both the puppies were limping. Jemima Puddleduck was escorted home in tears on account of those eggs. She laid some more in June and she was permitted to keep them herself, but only four of them hatched. Jemima Puddleduck said that it was because of her nerves, but she had always been a bad sitter. The End <laughs>